Keep a seat. I hope you're ready for today's NSL Cup Final between the Pioneers and the Crobies. We're going to be announcing the team, so please put your hands together for them. First up, we have the away team, the Pioneers. Batting first, we got second base, Dan Bello. Batting second, third base, Casey Petit Castor. Batting third, shortstop, Steve Hazard. Batting fourth on first base, we've got Jane Petit Castor. And pitching for Pioneers, Dan Spinks. Catcher, Vicki Chapman. In left field, we've got Fleeta Chu Siegel. In right field, Ruth McIntosh. Batting ninth and right center, Steve Rice. In left center, Amy Rice. On the bench today and hoping to make a run out for the, pion for the Pioneers, we have Robbie Robinson, <laughs> Michael Lee, Gary Hawksby, Brad McIntosh, Liz Keaveny, Sean Spinks, Zara Wallen, and Kim Akers. They have your pioneers. Put your hands together. Our home team today are the Chromies. Starting lineup, number two, Matt Tomlin. Batting second and playing third base, we have number 23, Chaya Louie. Batting third and playing right center, number 44, Mike McDowell. Batting at cleanup, we've got left center, number 75, Mo Flett. Batting fifth and pitching, number 25, David Id Lee. Batting sixth, number 24, playing right field, Misha Sokova. Batting seventh, playing second base, number 34, Danny DJ Gunn. Batting eighth, and playing first base, number nine, Marquetta Salgoa. Batting ninth, left field, number 13, Paul Goff. Number 10, batting 10, number 31, catcher, Cat Gullet. Also hoping to make a run out today for the Chromies, we've got number eight, George Bartlett. Number three, Steffi. Number eleven, Barbara Killen. And number thirty, Nat Bailey Clouston. Those are your two teams today, and your umpires in the field. We've got Pete Saunders. And behind the plate, Chris Moon. Pull up a seat and get ready for a fantastic final. Let's play well. So welcome back again to Farnham Park for the last game of the day, the national championship game, the NSL 1 final between the Pioneers and the Chromies. These two teams have dominated the this final and the uh, NSL championship in recent years, so it's kind of fitting that they're meeting in this final, but Pioneers just barely got here. A tremendous effort by the Knights in the, uh, in the pre-final, the semi-final game. Pushed them to the very limit. They only won the game in the, uh, in the last inning with a walk-off walk -off run. These two teams have met twice today already in the morning game, which was played in the round-robin phase of the tournament. Um, the Pioneers won the game easily. In the uh, playoff round, the Chromies won that game easily. So they've each had a fairly convincing win over their main rival, and uh, this is the rubber game, and it's the winner-take-all game. And this could go either way. Both teams are very strong, got good benches. And depth could be important here, and both teams, of course, if they get on an offensive roll, they can pile up runs incredibly quickly. So we start with Cromies in the field. Cromies my old team, so try not to be too biased here. So here we go. Pioneers are the away team in this game, David Lee in the circle, and Dan Bello at that. Dan's Dan a great place hitter. He plays for my midweek team in London. He's a superb player.
count goes to two and one. David Lee can occasionally lose the strike zone, but that ball's in the air. And it's taken in right center field by Mike McDowell for the first out of the game. And that's always a big out. Yep. Especially the start of a tense final like this. There's, not, there's very little between these two teams. It's going to bring Casey Pettit Caster to the plate, the Pioneers' third base player. Uh, she's a new player for the Pioneers, uh, not one I'm familiar with, but apparently she's incredible. And her sister is batting cleanup. And there's a line drive base hit into right center field. There she goes. Easy, easy run to one. And that will bring one of the Pioneers' several power threats, but probably their main one, Steve Hazard, to bat. Steve is always capable of putting the ball out of the ballpark. Just one of the best players slow pitch, slow pitch has ever seen. And there is a high fly drive from right field, but he didn't get all of it. And Mo Flett is at the fence to take the catch. Casey will move up to second base, but uh, the Chromies got what they wanted. They contained him. Yeah, Steve won't be happy with that. Okay, he'll come back strong again. He just got under it, and of course, if he hits it out there and it's in the ball for Mo Flett is going to catch it. These players all know each other so well. They've been playing against each other for years, most of them. They know what to expect. So this is Jane Pettit Caster, the Pioneers' first base player. Runner on second base, her sister, in fact. The Pioneers would like to get a run here, even if it's only one. Ooh, that's a powerful hit. It's, it's in the air. It is taken in right field. By okay, so too many fly balls for the Pioneers there. Put so it in the air at this level, the likelihood is we all will be caught. So Pioneers fail to score in the top of the first inning. Chrome is coming to bat. We have no score. Chromies are a mixture of veteran, let's call them veteran players, and younger players like leadoff hitter Matt Tomlin, who's one of the quickest players in British softball. It has really made an impact this year for the, for the Chromies. Matt plays fast pitch as well. He's been on the uh, GB under 19 men's fast pitch team and now on the senior men's fast pitch team. So he's, he's a really promising player, but in slow pitch, he makes a tremendous impact with his speed. Yeah, he's deadly on the base path. Great hands. Occasionally, occasionally prone to get a little overexcited with the throw, but um, that'll come. Yeah, we forget, I think, with some of these players, how young they still are. Because, you know, some of them have been around for a few years. So Dan Spinks will be the pitcher for Pioneers. Dan has been around for many, many years. Uh, been a stalwart for GB Slow Pitch as well yeah, as for the Pioneers. Legends. And probably one of the best fielding pitchers I think I've ever seen. I've never seen anyone as good as him with a hard ground ball hit back up the middle. Uh, he's uh, uh, outstanding at those, e easily the best. Just throwing the ball around to his infielder so everybody gets a feel of it. And Matt Tomlin is about to step into the box for the Cronies. Normally, uh, Matt's dad, Ian Tomlin, who's uh, the GB under-19 men's team manager, would be here to see him, but Ian's actually on his way to Europe with the Meteors, who are playing in the Men's Super Cup next week, or this coming week. And Lovely Matt starts it out with a base hit, skips off the glove, the left center fielder, and Matt is instantly at second base. And that's exactly the start the Chromies were looking for. And that's what Matt does. He doesn't hit it particularly deep. He's only a slight guy, but he runs so quickly and so aggressively. This will bring Chaya Louie to the plate. Chaya's already hit a couple of balls out of the park during this tournament. And not long return from the uh, World Championships, Fast Pitch World Championships in Japan. She's been a... a, a an amazing addition for Cromies. Great pick up. Because not only can she hit, but she anchors third base. And 
teams that have a dependable woman third base player are way ahead of the game. He's fails. Oh, there's a hard line drive roped into left field for a base hit. That's going to score Matt easily. And Cromies, that speed there from the Shire. And Cromies draw first blood in the game. And here comes Mike. This is Mike McDowell, who's currently on the GB Slow Pitch squad. Um, he's really, uh, you know, he came into the squad when I was still working with him, and uh, he's really come into his own probably the last season and a half or so. He's just stepped right up and comfortably parked over the fence. Yeah. Oh. And drives the ball fouled on the right field line. Not, not his usual hit, actually. He tries to hit the ball out to left and left center, but... Uh, why not? That was a, a deep foul. He can hit all fields. And that is gone. And there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the first time he's done that today. Straight over the center left field fence. They're right on cue. Mike McDowell hits a two-run home run. Chaya Louie trots home ahead of him. Thanks for making the commentator look good there, Mike. Cromies are after a 3 nothing lead, but you have to remember that in the game they played this morning, Cromies jumped out to a 4 nothing lead in the first inning, and the Pioneers cruised the rest of the game. So, And here's Mo. This is Mo Flett. She's been with the Cromies for a while now. Another very, very skillful hitter. The Chromies will definitely want to make a statement early in this game, and three runs is, is nice, but probably not what they're looking for. Well, Fleck takes the strike. She's looking for the pitch that she can drive. Ground ball to second base and good hard ground ball there, but Dan um, Bellow at second was positioned exactly right for that. Oh, here we go with a bit of a legend. Yes, this is uh, David Lee coming to the plate. Um, Ed, as he's best known, <laughs> pitcher, home run hitter, long-standing GB player, now GB assistant coach. and still capable of putting the ball over the fence. I had the pleasure of playing with and coaching with it for many years, and yeah, he's still very dangerous. That is not gonna leave the ballpark. It's fly ball to left field and battling the sun. Catch is made by uh, Chu Siegel. That's two down. Hey, the Cromies will wanna try and eke another run out here if they can. And this brings Misha Sultjevic to the plate, one of the two uh, Czech twins who played for the Cromies for many years since coming here from the Czech Republic. Yeah, Misha is the left-handed batter of the two. Yeah, Misha bats left-handed, Marketa bats right-handed. And the umpire's just taken a hopper in the mouth. <laughs> that looks sore. But he's still got all his teeth. But he's going to hang in there. Dan Spinks come in to see if he's all right. If you go back uh, 10 or, well, about 15 years, the uh, soldier of the twins, Misha and Marquette, were the stalwarts of the Czech national fast pitch team. They came to the UK, what, 10, 12 years ago? They were playing for Chromies um, back when I was still playing for 2010, so they've been there, you know, part of the Chromies team for a long time now. And uh, I mean, they're great players. It took yeah. them a while to really adapt to slow pitch, but they've kind of done that now. Misha flies out there to uh, right center field. So the inning is over, but it's a productive inning for Chromies. They score three, they score first, and at the end of an inning, Chromies in three, inning, Pioneers nothing. Zero, Chromies three. Just a reminder to please keep your eye on the field of play at all times. All balls can 
and wouldn't leave the field of play. But if you do happen to get hit by a foul ball, uh, don't worry because we have an amazing first aid team today. Uh, please, can I give a, here a, a round of applause for our first aiders, Vic Moran and Matt Pesto. David Lee taking his warm-up pitches here. The uh, Chromies do have other pitchers. Uh, Matt Tomlin pitches, um, one or two others, but um, David Lee has been their main pitcher in this tournament. And he's facing his opposite number now, Dan Spinks, at the plate for Pioneers. Great power hits it down. Dan takes the strike. And a ball deep. The uh, Chromies have an excellent outfield, so Pioneers are going to hit the ball over the fence. Otherwise, um, anything in the air is going to be going to be caught. There's a lot of speed out there. That's in the air, but it's foul. And that's a strikeout. It's a third it's strike on a foul ball, which is unusual for Dan. He likes to quite often to, he'll, he'll foul a deep one on the third baseline and then come up with a hit usually. That's, that's normally the way he goes. But not that time. And this brings Vicki Chapman, who's the hero for the Pioneers in the uh, semifinal. Her three-run home run in the sixth inning brought the Pioneers back to the game, tied the game. Clean over the fence, she went with that. It came with two out, and uh, without that hit, it might be the Knights in the final rather than Pioneers. So she has that standing power. I think he's looking for the pitch that she wants to drive, which is what she did in that at bat in the last game. Hit her home run on a 3-0 three, three and oh count. Uh, she's certainly experienced enough to know exactly which pitch she hits the best. That's a swing, and that's a hard line drive right up the middle. Oh, she really got hold of that. She hits the ball very hard when she when she gets hold of it. So one out, Vicky Chapman on first base. This is uh, Fleeter. This is Fleeter Siegel, yeah. Playing left field today for in this game for Pioneers. And that's another base hit to center field. Good Vicky will clean pick up from uh, center left fielder there. Vicky will stop at second base. So two on for Pioneers, one out. And Ruth McIntosh, another very dependable hitter coming to the plate. Now Ruth loves the right field line. She can hit both lines at will. She's a particularly good right field hitter. And she'll, she'll try that until she gets two strikes and then she'll... Yeah, she'll go all the way until she's, she's run out of options and she'll just hit the next strike. There it is. Mm -hmm. That's foul down the right field line. For a long time, the GB Slopish team has had two female batters, Ruth and Emily Clifford, who were both adept at going down the lines. Both lines. With power as well. That's fly ball to driving by McDowell back and he misses it, goes off his glove. Yeah, he was backing up there. Um, yeah. Rather than turning and running, he, he, he thought that was closer in than it was, I think, and uh, was running backwards, which is always difficult. And, yeah. uh, he yep, bang bangs his him. knee out there in frustration, but really he should have caught that and he should have tracked it better. So now we've got bases loaded. The, the runners had to hold up because, of course, they expected the catch. Bases loaded, one out, Steve Rice. Line drive up the middle into center field. So That's gonna score two. Ruth stops at second, and Pioneers are back in the ball game. That's big for the Pioneers. Keeping this close. And Amy Rice coming to the plate now. Another GB slow pitch, um, long time. Uh, player on the team. She quit for a while to have her children, but she's now back. 
um, good to see her back playing regularly. And that's a base hit through the hole between first and second base. She's, and that's she's very good at hitting the very, very good. It's going to load the bases again. And it's going to bring up the top of the order, Dan Bello. Okay, Dan can hit all fields. So suddenly that uh, missed catch by Mike McDowell is looming pretty large here. <laughs> yeah, Ruth who hit it is now on three. First two pitches from David Lee are both high and inside. Count goes to two and oh. He's trying to stop him from going to the right side now. It's a strike. Not a not a good pitch to hit. Nice pitcher's pitch. Line drive, base hit through the hole between third and short. That brings in Ruth and right behind her, Steve Rice. And Pioneers take the lead. Good coaching from the third base coach, Pie Man, there. Sending, uh, sending Steve, who's a very, very quick runner. So the rally continues. Runners on first and second. That's Casey Pettit Castor at the back. Well, the last okay. time she hit a good, hard shot through the right side. Expect her to do that again here. Turns away from a strike, which looked a bit high. Yeah, definitely not in her zone. Didn't like that one either. That one wasn't called a strike. That's a drive into center field, and that's going to be down for a base hit. Picked up by Mo Flat. Got back in, but Amy Rice is going to score. Another then. good hit. And here comes Steve Haas at the end. I'm sure that he'll be thinking this time do something a little bit different. David Lee can get into these situations because he tends to pitch fairly, fairly flat. The ball sits up there to be hit. And also, the, all of these bats have seen all of the pitches, pitches so many times now. Yeah. Steve Hazard takes the ball. Runners on the corners. That is gone. That must have gone, or was it? Ooh. Yes, it looked like for a minute like uh, the chance for a catch, but no. That's another three-run home run. And that's how Steve Hazard can hurt you. How a lot of these bats can hurt you. There's a lot of power in both of these teams. That was, that was a good time for that hit. Suddenly, from a... 3-0 Chromie's lead, we have an 8-3 Pioneer's lead. He was saying, Bob, that they probably want to be more than three Chromie's, and you spot on there. Brings Jane Pettit Castor to the plate with uh, nobody on base, of course, but a lot of damage done by the Pioneers. And it's another line drive base hit. Mo Flett picks it up, gets it back in, but uh, Chromies might have to think about pitching change, do you think? I'm sure Dougie will be having it in the back of his mind. I mean, just sometimes you, you know, it can be the best pitcher there is, but sometimes you just get hit. Either that or David Lee's going to have to mix things up a little bit more than he's Start been doing. Start throwing something a bit more marginal. Now here's Dan Spinks, another home run threat. Takes a strike. And it hits the ball foul. Trying to go to right field. Perilously <laughs> close to the car park, that one. <laughs> I mean, David Lee is, you know, he's seen it all and he's done it all. And he's not going to be phased very easily, but he, he can get annoyed out there at times. Yeah, yeah. Gets a little bit frustrated sometimes. But he's coming back from a lot worse than this, he knows. That's an illegal pitch, too low, but he had a pitch to waste. And 
Yeah, it's a little bit high. That's not a bad idea from um, David there, from Ed there. And that's the base hit up through the middle. Then Dan Spinks not trying to do too much, just hit the ball where it's pitched. Good at bat from Dan Spinks there. Uh, I mean, it, the pitcher tried pretty much everything. And it brings Vicky Chapman back up to the plate. They're getting through this order. Vicky goes big again here, then uh, they really will be falling behind the Comies. Which is a little deep for a ball. Oh, that's a long drive. That is gone. Vicki Chapman has done it again. Oh, that was huge. Oh, I'm so pleased for her. What a hit. And that's brought a huge reaction from the crowd because Vicki is one of the most Vicky popular like players she's gonna cry. in softball. <laughs> she's so excited. <laughs> she loves that. You know, her career has not been entirely smooth. There's been you up know, and downs in it. And of course, she's, she's had children and. She's one of those players who's lacked a little confidence for many years, you know, not really believed in herself as much as other people have believed in her. And, you know, um, but she has all the capability in the world. She's a great athlete. And that's, uh, that's wonderful to see. I think maybe now, maybe now she's, she's a little more mature and she's had her kids. She's starting to come into her own. Ground ball to third base. Chaya Louie has it, makes the throw. Lovely throw from Chaya there. And that's two outs, and uh, it seems like a long time since the first out. It does. And of course, the score is now uh, Pioneers 11, Chromies 3, and it's it's not a lead that can't be overcome, but... Uh, We're only in the second inning. And of course, Pioneers get to bat as well during their second inning. This is Ruth Vackintosh at the plate. Two out, no one on base. Most of these games you'll find that teams will have a breakout innings like this. They don't always do it inning after inning after inning. So the Cromies will be hoping that that will be the case, that this will be the Pioneers' big inning. Ruth uh, drops a single in the left field and... Um, think how long ago it was that, um, that she was dropped in center right? This brings up Steve Rice, left-handed batter, and most teams play him to pull. But he hits it to Chai Louie, who bobbles it, picks it up, goes to second base, gets the out there, and a long inning comes to, finally comes to an end. A long for the time out in the sun there for the Cronies. So their uh, manager, Doug Clouston, is going to rally them. He's going to uh, exhort them. He's going to beg and he's going to plead. He's going to see if he can get some runs so that they get back in the game quickly because. The more longer it goes on, the harder it's going to be. They'll be looking at scoring at least three in this inning. That's what you'd be probably wanting. Good, a good three solid runs in this one. Minimum. Pioneers, uh, of course, were the winners this year of the European Soviet Super Cup. Um, Pioneers, uh, H2O and Chromies came first, second, and third, I think, in that order. Um, so we, domi we dominated the tournament, but... It was the uh, the biggest European Slow Pitch Cup we've ever had. There were 16 teams there. All the crowd are cheering Vicky Chapman as she comes in to play catcher again. She literally looks like she's about to cry. She's so happy. There are very, very few people nicer than Vicky. Oh, she's lovely. Everybody's going to root for her in this situation. Thoroughly deserves that. So Danny Gunn steps in for Pioneers. It's only the bottom of the second inning. Solid is Danny Gunn at bat. See if he goes with his favorite shot to right field here. Left field's open though, left line. Yeah, there it is. Single uh, to the right of second base. Good lead off. I mean, Danny's been doing that shot for so many years. And sometimes it just feels like it's impossible to get him out. 
They were set up for him though. They, the left fielder had come off the line and uh, and they were slightly slightly uh, looking for that shot from Danny. But yeah, can't field that one. So here is the uh, the other Solcha between Marquetta. And in some ways with Chromies, the, the twins are, are keys to them because when both of them hit, they score a lot of runs. Sometimes it dries up and the Chromies offense uh, struggles when that happens. Change of ball there, that one was obviously damaged. likes to get ahead with that pitch down. <laughs> yeah, that's a base hit. That's what they want. That's going to send Danny Gunn ch chugging around to third. He gets there just ahead of the throw. This Kibini throws back to first, but Marquetta Solchev is not going to be caught out by that. Good aggressive running from Danny Gunn there. And a great hit from Marquetta. Puts Kwame's in a decent position here to, to start answering the finest runs. The batter is Paul Goff. Another one of those players who started very young. Seems like he's been around forever. He's still young. He takes the ball. He's very well known for his um, extremely quick, aggressive base running. Count goes to two and zero. Oh. This is Keebany playing very deep at third base. And of course, she's got a potential force play at second. It's another base hit. Takes a line drive to right field. They're a very tough team to put down, Chromies. They can just come up with hit after hit after hit. This brings up Kat Golick, who's the last batter in the Chromies order. They'll go back to the top of the order after this. Kat has played both for GB slow pitch and GB fast pitch. a good hard hit from Cat then just taken in right field but um, it's got a lot of power for someone who's quite petite so Maketa Solcheva took third on uh, tagged up and took third after the catch Paul Goff remains at first in the top of the order Matt Tomlin is up The base hit up the middle, ground His ball. Favorite shot. Ball golf goes to third. Marquetta scores. The wheels wheels are beginning to turn for Chromies. That shows um, how quick and aggressive Paul Goff is. That he made it to three on a fairly shallow hit to the uh, center field there. This is Chai Louie. This is another lady who's capable of hitting over and does hit it over the fence. That one's deep, so the count goes to one and one. Ball is short. Dan Spinks is being careful here. And it's another base hit. Line drive into left field. That scores Paul Goff. Matt Tomlin has to stop at second. The ball got back in quickly. Nice line drive there, right through between the shortstop and third base. And Mike 
Mike's already hit one over the fence. Yeah, another three-run homer here would uh, do the Crumbies a world of good. This could be a, a high-scoring game the way it's going, the way both teams are hitting. Steve Hazard shades his eyes from the sun. Mike McDowell hits a long drive to left field, and that is gone. Again. Again. Second time in this game. He's on fire. Six RBIs so far in this, in only the second inning. Probably the second inning. Wow, what a hitting game. It's brilliant. Dan Spinks looks uh, slightly uh, unhappy on the mound, but uh, he knows that the Trovies can do this. He knows his own team can he do it as well. He knows what to expect. Both teams do. <coughs> Here's Mo Flett. Score is now 11, 11 to 8 in favor of Pioneers. <coughs> it's a ground ball to shortstop. Steve Hazard makes that play. Very nice pick up from the first baseman there. Score is 11 9, in fact. And David Lee's coming to the plate. Someone else who can put the ball out. And he tries, and it's high and deep to left field. Gone. And it's gone. It's gone. This is turning into a bit of a slugfest. <laughs> David Lee does his uh, fairly regal trot around the bases. Gentlemanly lope around. Oh, and here come the Chromies. Absolutely. So they line up to greet another home run, and the score is now 11-10. And the Pioneers have a little conference on the, uh, in the circle. As Dougie always likes saying, no, no lead is big enough. But I, I suspect that the Pioneers will come back at them hard. Yeah, there's a lot more runs in this game. Oh, loads, yeah. It's great. This is Misha, Misha Sochova at bat. Ground ball to second. That's routine. And the inning is over, but the uh, Chromies did what they had to do, really, to get back in this game. They answered a big inning from Pioneers with one of their own. And after two full innings of play, Pioneers 11, Chromies 10. I think the Chromies would be very happy with that. Uh, probably more runs than they would have hoped for originally to get that close to Pioneers after two. It takes a small army to put on an event like the National Softball League Championships. The BSF would like to send out a few thank yous. I'd like to thank the Baseball Softball UK for the organization of the event, and in particular Luke Scott, Bob Cromer, and Joel Watkins. I'd also like to thank the grounds crew for taking care of these fields, Tristan Cam, Tom Thornhill, Liam Morrison, and Peter Kraft. Our tournament control today and doing a fantastic job is Don Robson. Put your hands together for Don, please. And last but certainly not least, we have Liz Graham for, well, basically organizing absolutely everything. Thanks very much, Liz. Amy Rice leads off for Pioneers in the top of the third. It's the bottom of the order. They'll then go up to the top. I would expect a sharp single to the left or up the middle here. Amy takes a strike. She's gone big center right. Mike Riddell going back again. This time he makes the catch. He got a little bit of a better read on that one. Good power from Amy. Turned and at least he turned the right way on it. So that's one out. The ball went a long way out there. Once again, Dan Bello. Real catalyst for pioneers at the top of the order. First pitch is the ball. A 
That's a strike. Crowbies will be very happy to have got that first out. That's good patience from Dan. And again, the there's ball's no one on base. He can hit the pitch he likes to hit best. Yeah, the ball's drifting inside from David Lee. That that was, was a little deep on him. That's too deep. So he's certainly not going to swing at that um, with uh, so many balls on him. I mean, your first rule is that pitchers, slow pitches, don't walk people. There are other rules that come after that, but so we'll see what comes of this. And what comes of it is a base hit up the middle by Casey Pettit Castor, and that's gonna score a run. Throws coming to the plate, but Kat Gollick can't gather it in. Casey takes second base on the throw. And right away, the Pioneers are in business and on the scoreboard again. And the, uh, the hit ball made contact with the runner there, but um, it's not actually an out unless it interferes with a play. And that was clean through the infield that ball. And she hits the ball really hard. That's really three does. hits for her. Yeah. And once again, Steve Hazard comes to the plate. David Lee looks to see if his outfielders are uh, sufficiently deep. But this time it's just a base hit. It's a ball chopped between third and short. Is there anything worse when you're that deep on a batter and they scuff one through? <laughs> it's a long run in. So Casey goes to third. Steve Hazard stops at first. There's one out. Jane Pettitcaster is the batter. I think David Lee is asking whether she's actually in the batter's box. I would say she's comfortably in. But he yeah, got what got he was looking for there. Yeah. And they don't get the double play, which means another run scores. Casey Pettit Castro comes in to score. It was close, but they didn't quite get the throw back to first in time. So I, I think David Lee just got in their head there. So it's another run, takes the score to 13-10 for Pioneers, but now there are two down, runner on first base. And Dan Spinks is the batter. The ball just hits the back edge of the plate for a ball. Dan tried to uh, muscle it out, but it's gonna be foul. That's probably a sign he's gonna get a base hit now. That's his, his favorite first swing. That's a ball. Goes for the big hit. shot again, and that's going to get down for a base hit. Just Mo drops Flet short that one. No flat picks it up, gets it in. That does the job. Runners on first and second, two outs. Vicky Chapman. Here she comes. He won't be pitching her any meat, that's for sure. No, he will not want a repeat of what happened last time. We'll be trying to go high and inside here as much as he can. And that's exactly what the first pitch was, but it's called a ball. David Lee asked if it was deep, and apparently it was. It's a strike and probably a little low for what Vicky was looking for. That's more. But that's caught. That's in another fantastic right field. hit from Vicky Center right there, but yeah. Mike on the fence. So the Pioneers answer, but I think the Crowbies will be pretty comfortable with. It's settled down now a little bit, I think. Yeah. So at the end of uh, two and a half innings, score is Pioneers 13 and Crowbies 10, and uh, Crowbies will be trying to uh, yeah, see if tie they get themselves or a lead here. Yep. 
think if one team can get a complete shutdown inning in this game, it's going to be huge. Um, it could make a big difference. And both teams are capable because both teams are excellent uh, defensive teams. If they carry on hitting like this, I don't see any um, shutout innings happening. But it's still early days. And, uh, again, it's been a long weekend. <laughs> and I can't remember the more better weather for nationals than this weekend. I mean, there's been hardly a cloud in the sky. And it's been amazing. Temperature's been lovely. You know. Just about right, I would say perfect for slow pitch softball. Not too hot, but nice and warm. The sun is a little bit of an issue. Certainly as you get later in the day. And we start with Danny Gunn for Chromies. I'd really like to see um, Danny take this hard down the field line. That was foul. Danny kind of thinks about what he's going to do next. Uh, Miss Keeney way off the third base line. Now she's getting a little bit closer to it. And he makes it work. Yeah. That right field shot again. He can pre hit pretty much any pitch to, to right field. It's, uh, yeah, not all people can do that. He leans back and hits it inside out, basically. Yeah, and he controls the bat really well with that. Well, most people do that. They have a tendency to hit it straight up in the air. Because, he, yeah, he drops his back shoulder. It's not what you teach as a hitting coach. But definitely not. <laughs> but he's definitely found a way to make that one work for him. So here's Marquetta Solcheva. Danny on first base. Two strikes, one ball. <coughs> That's Steve Hazard. He's getting. That's a, it's a beautiful double play, but basically, Dan Spinks fooled Marquette into swinging at something she never should have done. There's a ball way high. It's wonderful to see when you see a double play like that, play that speed. And I have to say, the first baseman, she's doing an amazing job, like hanging on to the stuff that he's yeah. throwing at her because none of them have been easy. No, that was not the best throw. She no, had to stretch for that. Definitely to her non glove side. And, she, yeah, she, and it was so quick. It's, it's quite hard to adjust when the ball's coming at you that fast. Now, Doug Clouston is out talking to the, uh, the base umpire, I think, asking whether she held the bag or whether Steve, in fact, touched second base. But he's not going to get anywhere with this. Unfortunately, the decisions have been made quite a while ago. That they're not changing that. Worth a try. And Doug, Doug is always he's courteous about it. But yeah. So now we have uh, two outs, nobody on base. And Paul Goff at the plate. So this could be the uh, shutout inning we were talking about. It could be. Strike takes the count to one and one. That one hits the plate, so it's two balls and a strike. And that's inside, so the count goes to three and one. Dan Spinks can't believe it, but Chris Moon is the umpire. He made the call. Three and one. And that's outside, so Paul Goff goes to first base. Dan, a great Spink, at Dan Spinks looks at the heavens. <laughs> and so they've walked Cat Golic to, load, uh, to have runners on one and two. Yeah, Cat takes the automatic walk, so that brings up the top of the order in Matt Tomlin. And from a very unpromising situation, there might be something going here for Chromies. Two quick runners again on base for Chromies. Um, and Matt most likely come up with his trademark single up the middle. Said it's a fly ball. 
which is going to drop in front of the left center fielder. And that is going to score two runs. Matt settles for a double. That wasn't the line drive used to for Matt, but it was enough on it, dropped it in nicely, and Amy in center left there made a great effort on it. It was just too short for her to get to. So suddenly the Chromies have managed to dredge something out of this inning and um, got another runner in scoring position and Chaya Louie at the plate. And she's hit two really vicious line drives into uh, left field so far for base hits. Any single will score Matt Tomlin from second. You kind of feel Matt Tomlin would score from second on a bunt. Yeah, most likely. Chaya takes a strike and it's one and one. And there it is again. That's a line drive in the left center field this time, but Matt Tomlin trots around to score. Chaya Louie is three for three, and the ball game is tied, 13 each. And she waited very patiently to see something that she, she liked the look of. Even though there were two down, she had the patience. Chaya Louie is the all-time home run leader for Boston College in fast pitch softball. She's played fast pitch for years and years. She plays on the GB fast pitch team. As Sarah said, came back from Japan for the World Championship recently, but she's taken the slow pitch um, unlike, well, way better than a lot of fast pitch players do. Adapted very quickly. She made herself into a premier slow pitch player. And she loves it, and I think that's why. She really enjoys it. Is this a different thing to look at, isn't it? Hey, look, we've had a change of pitch with the Pioneers here. Dan Spinks has swapped himself out to catch her. It looks like, uh, <laughs> is it Jane Pettit Caster? She's, uh, so we have Vicky Chapman has gone in. No, Vicky Chapman has yeah, gone, gone, gone to first. first. Jane Pettit Caster has gone from first to pitcher. This woman can do everything. <laughs> she was playing shortstop earlier today. It's brilliant, love that. You don't very often see female pitchers at this level. You don't see many of them at any level. First pitch is a ball. Next pitch is hit to shortstop. Nice backhand play by Steve Havard. Over to second for the force there play. That change of personnel did just the right thing. So a lovely play by Steve Havard. Ends the inning, but not before Chromies tie the score at 13 all at the end of three innings. And this is the game we were looking for. Yep. We might have a couple of, of quietish innings where there are only a few hits for each team, and then it could, at any point it could explode into another big inning. We tied at 13 apiece. Oh, looking at two excellent finals here. One thing we need to think about here is quarter to seven. And um, I mean, it's a lovely day, and right now there's plenty of light out there. But uh, if this game continues with loads of runs being scored, we could uh, darkness could we could be here all night. Could begin to fall. We could. I think they're probably quite grateful for darkness compared to the sun in their eyes. <laughs> yeah, that sun's getting really low now. It's it's got to be a problem. There's a bit of shade creeping towards third base, which uh, will help. I mean, there is a kind of sunscreen on the backstop up there, and it, the sun's getting to the point where it just about might do a little bit of good. Yeah. It takes its time to get there, but uh, that's going to help. So here's Pioneers at the top of the fourth inning with uh, Lita Siegel. Count goes to one and one. Ruth McIntosh on deck, and then uh, Steve and Amy Rice to follow. It's a high fly ball to left field, but he didn't get all of it. Paul Goff shades his eyes and takes the catch. It's one down. Yeah, that was pretty routine, apart from the sun. The 
Dougie's pulling his outfield in. On the, on the right side. Ooh, risky. Mm -hmm. Mike McDowell could get burned here, possibly. Well, he pretty much did on Ruth, didn't he, earlier? I mean, he, he struggled to... There she goes. Instead, Ruth hits the ground ball between first and second. The throw to first, but it's going to be too late. It's too quick. She can still run, and it's a base hit for Ruth. That's a great at that. Love that. So here comes Steve Rice. So he's a very much a middle hitter. Line drive over the head of first base, down the right field line. That's going to be extra bases. It takes face first dive into two to be safe. Ruth McIntosh around to third. He's safe, but absolutely filthy. <laughs> It's a dusty field. Yep. There's been very little rain this summer, and uh, and then most of it's now down Steve's front. So here is his wife, Amy, at bat. So one out, two runners in scoring position. The Pioneers threatening to retake the lead. Again, Mike McDowell might be a little shallow given where Amy hit the ball the last time. Yeah, I think she spotted him. Count is one and one. Uh, Ooh, she Chai Louie really cuts it off at first base, makes a throw to first. That's a great play. Very great play. She moved well to that because that was nearly through. She, wasn't, she was about a foot off getting that ball through. So that's two outs. The runners still holding at second and third. And Dan Bello for his fourth at bat of the game, and we're only in the fourth inning. Oh, and that's a line drive into right center field. That's a base hit, and that's going to score two runs. Gets through to the fence. Dan Bello's tearing around third, going for home, and the throw is going to be late. Uh, so center right and right field both going for it and it, it kind of went right between them I think they, they were unsighted because of running towards right across each other so I guess um, you'd score that as a inside the park home run you can't really give an error no I don't I, no, I think that would be harsh it was a great hit it was going to be a double or a triple right between anyway. them and it was tough to field This is Casey Pettit Caster, and she hits the ball hard again. But Mo Flett is going to be there to take the catch to retire the side. So three, three more runs for Pioneers. They retake the lead at 16 to 13, and we're going to the bottom of the fourth inning. And Chaya Louie getting high fives from her teammates for that play at third base. Great footwork from Chai there. She hunted that ball down. In her college days, Chai was an outfielder, but mostly in British slow pitch, particularly while well, at fast pitch, she's been playing third base. She's certainly got reflexes for it. Yeah, it's pretty hot spot considering, uh, you know, with the, with the, the metal bats and uh, the men hitting with the pow and, and the women, to be fair, down the, that left side. You need somebody who's uh, with that kind of quality glove. It's a different challenge in fast pitch, of course, because you're facing the short game, you're facing bunts and slaps, and third base can be a, a hot spot for that. But uh, Chai is completely equipped to play third base in slow pitch. So here's Mo Flett for Chromies, and they'll want to get the uh, these runs back. Well, if anyone can lead them off here, Mo can. Yeah. Jane Pettit Caster is still in the uh, in the circle for Chromies. And this is a pitch that Chromies right. won't be um, used to because she's a very recent addition to the Pioneers, and they won't have seen a lot of her. No, that's true. Absolutely. She looks like she knows what she's doing, certainly. Well, she really does, yeah. She's very confident. Yeah. Oh, 
And the uh, delay was for Gary Hawksby, who's replacing Dan Spinks as the uh, catcher for Pioneers. Gary very Hawksby, popular. Very popular, long veteran player, long career. Used to play for the, uh, the old Baker Tompkins team many years ago. They won a lot of national titles before they disbanded. I'm personally never been called for interference by d by doing that. As long as you don't speak to the here, it's it's okay. Um, I've certainly never been been called out on it. See it at big tournaments, big championships, never been a problem. And Mo Flat waits for the ball, lines it straight back up the middle. It kicks off. Left center no, fielder and Mo is going to get kind of oh, all the way to third base. And she won't try and score even though the ball gets loose and goes to the backstop. It's not that she's particularly fast anymore, but Mo Flett is one of the smartest base runners in the game. Yeah. As soon as she saw that ball kick off, she knew that she had third she, base. Yeah, she was thinking. Yeah. As soon as you see a slight fumble, that's, that's another. You've got to be aggressive towards the next base. She did exactly that. I expect um, David Lee to score her here. That's certainly going to get the run in. It's deep to left center field. It's taken at the fence. But Mo Flat trots home. to 14. Didn't quite get all of that. And Gary Hotsby, the catcher, of course, used to pitch all the time. So no one on base and Misha Sochova is the batter. Thinks about that, but takes it for a ball. Inside for ball two. That's a strike, and that's on the outside half of the plate. And there's a line drive, base hit into right field. Beautiful, beautiful left-handed stroke. So one out, one on, and Danny gone at the plate. Looks like they were going to be necking, necking it again in this inning. Well, I know where this is going. It's low for a ball. low again and by the same token Jane is not going to pitch to many of these hitters no ball three and then ball th three three and one well, doesn't look like she's swinging the outside one full count three and two And Danny Gunn hits it in the air, and that is going to drop between three fielders. And Misha Solcheva, rounded second base, fell down and is tagged out. The, the pitcher did very well there, actually, because uh, Dan just about managed to eke out a, well, it was a pop-up to center right. Yeah, in the end, she made him hit a pitch he didn't really she want to She floated that one in, and he had to reach for it. So it, was, it was probably a ball, but he just couldn't take a chance. But unfortunately, the Crobies run, run themselves in and out on the base, and nothing Misha could do. Right. And here is Sister Marquetta.
Jane is falling behind hitters, something she won't want to do consistently. And that's ball three. Going to the meat pitch in there. Pulls back one strike. But that one is short. So Marquetta walks. Pushes Danny Gunn to second base. Makes the rally a little bit more promising for Cromies. Okay, you've got a, a, a batter who hits well to the right side here with in Paul Goff. He's certainly going to have a look at a few after that walk. That's a strike. A good comeback from her there. And another strike two. He's got an excited catcher. Well done. There's another one. No, that's outside. So the count goes to two and two. Oh, snaps. And again, wow, the uh, Marquetta Silchava out at second base, rounding the bag. They make the throw. They catch her just off the bag. The run scored. She's having a bit of a pop at her base coach. At, uh, uh, Actually, we think the run scored. We're just checking. Yes, it did. But he's saying he didn't call home, so I, I, I didn't see it. But yeah, she, she left second base and just didn't get back quickly enough. No. And that's uh, both Soldier for Twins out at second base. A bit of an accident, yeah. Neither one of them should have been. You don't want that. You really don't want to make third out on the base path like that. Still, we've come to the end of four innings. There's only one run in this game, and uh, Pioneers lead 16 15, but. Uh, the final score is going to be nothing like that. So. David Lee is coming in to get his sunglasses because the sun is very low now, but it's probably right in his, his eyes. It hasn't quite reached uh, high enough over the pitching plate for him. Pretty soon it's not going to be there anymore. Yeah, it'll only be uh, right field that's suffering, or the outfield and second base that's suffering in a minute or two. When Steve Hazard once it comes up to bat, you really want to be able to see where the ball is. So here's Steve Hazard leading off. And it's a bouncer which just eludes Chai Lewis. She tried to pick it, couldn't quite do that. Steve is going for second. Ooh, that was close. Yeah. That was a really nice tag from Danny on that. They're saying that Steve has just evaded it too. Uh, he was very aggressive going to two. Very aggressive, um, and I guess he just evaded the tag, but I, it looked like it might have been out. He didn't slide either, so uh, he took a chance there. But he's, he's, it's, it paid off for him. And another of Steve's weapons is that he's very, very quick as well. So here is Jane Pettit Castor, the, the pitcher. Oh, this is the uh, third baseman. No, no, it's her, uh, it's her sister, the pitcher. Hard hit, another hard hit. Second base, pick picked by Danny, Danny Gunn. Gunn, throw to first. Steve Hazard doesn't move. That was a nice play. Yeah, he got down well, that? Especially with the sun in his eyes. So one out, no advance on the bases. Gary Hawksby is going to bat. Dan Spinks can, of course, re-enter the game later if, if he needs to in a late-inning situation where they might need some runs. Gary Hawksby bounces a single up the middle. That was a cheeky shot. Steve Hazard trots to third base, not attempting to score. Yeah, Gary didn't get a hold of all of that, but it went through a gap. So one out, runners on the corners. For Vicky Chapman. Yeah, 
right field is well off her line and on the fence. And the ball is kind of going through sunlight and shadow on its way to the plate. Oh, Ooh. Wow. line wow. drive smash, base hit to left field. She hit that so hard. Steve Hazard trots home. Gary Hawksby stops his second base. Pioneers stretch the lead to 17-15. Yeah, Chai had no chance for the, to grab that line drive. It just passed her before she even realized. And we've got the um, substitute runner here for Vicky. Zara Wallens running for Vicky Chapman. Ground ball to Chaya, steps on third, goes to second. And Zara did everything she could there. She ran hard and she slid in hard. That's all you can ask. But she had no chance. No, nice slick double play pulled off by Chaya Louie. Gets Chromies out of the inning with minimal damage. It's tightening up now, this game. Chromies are coming to bat in the bottom of the fifth inning. Pioneers lead 17-15, which is not very much. We're level pegging it a bit here in the middle of the game. Be interesting to see if one of these teams has another breakout inning. Light's beginning to fade just a little bit. The sun has gone down behind a very large tree and uh, soon going to go below the horizon. Yeah, the only infielder really in the sun now is, is at second base. Left field still has a problem. Well, it's going Shady. to be in the outfield for a while, I think. Yeah. Here's Kat Golick at the bottom of the Chromie's order. She takes the ball. Vicki Chapman has re-entered and is back at first base. Kat Golick hits a fly ball to left field. That's easy. One down. Catch by Sean Spinks, Dan's brother, in left field. So Matt just hit relentlessly up the middle. Single off single, stretching one to a double. And not this time. And Sean Spinks <laughs> didn't see that initially, but he did get to it. That hung right in the sun, didn't it, for a while, and he made great strides at the last minute and caught it down on the, on the literally on the grass. Great so, catch. So two up, two down for Chromies. Chaya Louie at the plate, and Pioneers can sense the opportunity here if they can shut down Chromies and then score some more runs. Chromies will not have a lot of time left. Yeah, the pitching change has really worked for them. That's a line drive into center field going all the way to the fence. Chaya Louie will stop at second with a double. She continues to hit the ball hard. Oh, that was big. So there's a runner in scoring position for Mike McDowell, who already has two home runs and six RBIs in this game. Yeah, uh, Cromies will be hoping he can do it again here. And if he does, it will tie the score. Not to be on the home run front. But 
might get that single deep enough. Scores it is, higher. It is a base hit. Scores a run. Kermes will take that. Opportunity with Mo here to move Mike round to three. Ground ball to second base, over to first. Side retired. Dan Bello takes care of that. Yeah, that's a couple of shots to Dan Bello for Mo. So Chromies get a run. The game is still extremely close. We're going to the top of the sixth inning. Pioneers 17, Chromies 16. Still anybody's risk. Anybody's game. And of course, Chromies bat last. I would I'd be surprised if Pioneers used all of their bench yet because it's one of the biggest benches I've ever seen in my life. It's like a sea of red. <laughs> they do, uh, they like to collect players. Yeah, I'm sure they've got a few extras in there somewhere we haven't seen yet. Oh, we haven't seen Michael Lee yet. Uh, Robbie Robeson. Yeah. We haven't seen Grant McIntosh. But still counted by them. The score is Pioneers 17, Chromies 16. And Ruth McIntosh leads off the Pioneers in the top of the sixth inning. She's been hitting brilliantly. Let's see if they um, if they line up the outfield the way they did last when she came up last. So bringing the uh, right fielder in. You know where I'm saying, right? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, <laughs> Yes, David Lee came in to make the point that Chromies are home team, which of course they are, which means they will get the last bat in this game. Never had hurts to remind the opposition as well. And Ruth takes the strike. It's a ground, oh, nice pick by Child Louie. Great. Oh. Did the throw pulls. Marquetta off the bag. Yeah, it's just a bit off that throw. Beautiful pickup. And because Ruth is so far, she had to rush that. So Ruth is safe at first. So and credit to Ruth's speed. That brings Steve Rice to the plate. He's been hitting well. That was an out that Chromies really needed to have. Pitches outside for a ball. And again. See, of course, Pioneers have got yet another pitcher on the bench in Grant, Grant McIntosh. That ball was flat, and Steve Rice takes it on a line into right center field. Another single up the middle from Steve. Ruth goes to second. Oh, we've got Liz. Liz Keaveny pitch hitting for Amy Rice. I don't know his buff to her friends. Also being part of the GB slow pitch program. That's a great base hit and a great pickup by Mike McDowell, which is going to keep the runners, the bases loaded, That's keep a run from scoring. Amazing hit, brilliant, brilliant fielding as well. It looks like no part of the field has got a problem with the sun anymore. 
Frank Shane. Well, that looks like that's it. All the way around. It's just gone by down behind that building. So base is loaded for Dan Bello. And sharp ground ball past Matt Tallman at shortstop. Two runs are going to score. He took a chance there hitting that towards the shortstop, but it paid off, hit it hard. The Pioneers increased the lead to 19-16, and uh, this inning is far from over. Runners on first and second, and Casey Pettit Castor is the batter. That's into right center field. Mike McDowell is going to have that one. And there's no advance by the runners. Covering a lot of ground out there, Mike. Steve Hazard coming to bat, and a three-run home run here would be huge. Oh, and he's trying. Mo Flett goes back, and it's gone. Line drive, three-run home run. It's like to order. <laughs> to order, and a six-run lead suddenly for Pioneers. Right up the middle, that one. The pioneers are telling themselves it's not done yet, and of course they're right. Yeah, it's never right. over. But they certainly have a leg up. Yeah, they'll be feeling positive about that. Here's Jane Pettitcaster. Hard hit ball to right field. Taken by the right fielder. From our position here, we can't really see what happens in right field, but clearly that was caught. That was a pretty deep shot to right field. Fielder so well positioned again to, to make that catch. So two down, and Gary Hawksby at the plate. This is Gary's second at bat in the game. The first time he bounced a single through the right side. This time he hits it to Chaya Louie on a hop, and that's the end of that. So a big inning for Pioneers. They stretch the lead to 22-16 as Chromies come to bat in the bottom of the sixth inning. Well, that looks like quite a decent lead, but we know what the Chromies can do, and so the Pioneers. Ladies and gentlemen, today's cup final is being streamed live on YouTube with commentary provided by Bob Kerner and Sarah Vertigan. The filming and technical support is provided by YSLV. If you want to relive the memories, you can look it up on YouTube uh, and watch it over the Christmas holidays. So Dan Spinks is back in the circle as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Casey Pettitcaster is back at third base. Jane Pettitcaster is back at first base. Vicki Chapman is back to catcher. Everything is as it was the start of the game. Yeah, she started it first. We're still yet to use uh, a couple of the Pioneers' army. But we may well see them. Uh, they might feel that uh, no lead is safe and they don't want to take any chances, but we'll see. As David Lee stands in to uh, lead off the bottom of the sixth for Chromies. And starts it with a base hit. Sean Sphinx takes it on a hop, gets it back in. Just the leadoff they wanted. And that brings Misha Sochova to the plate. Oh, okay. So 
we've got George yeah, coming in here to run for David Lee. So we're hoping to George. pick up some extra bases. George here. Bartlett for David Lee. That's smart. The pitch was called a ball. Uh, neither of the Pioneers' battery thought so. And that's ball two. The light is beginning to fade pretty quickly. It is. There's a strike. It's a little pop-up foul. Yeah, I don't think she really wanted to swing at that one. Count goes to two and two, and Dan will try and give her a pitch she doesn't want to hit, but has to swing at. She did well there. Close but short, and the count is full. Fly ball caught in right field, but George Bartlett takes second base after the catch. But the Chromies don't need runs in one and twos at this point, they need a bunch of runs. So, Danny Gunner, we have him start that off right here. Pitch is short for a ball. Yeah, Danny Gunn gets his usual hit. Exactly the pitch he was looking for. George does his job. So George Bartlett scores. Danny's at first base, one out. And one run off the deficit. 22-17. They'll definitely want to get a few more before going to the seventh. Just to give themselves a bit more of a chance. Here's Marquette's soldier, but she takes ball one. And that's to second base to Steve Hazard for one. And a double play. Beautiful 4-6-3 double play. A close double play, but nicely done. Dan Bello to Steve Hazard, back to first base. The Chromies have to settle for just the one. Really nice play from Dan Bello and Steve Hazard there. Twenty-two-seventeen. So we come to the final inning of the Premier Nationals Championship Final for 2018. Pioneers will have one more chance to add to that lead. Chromies will hope to uh, shut them down so that uh, the mountain they have to climb in the bottom of the seventh doesn't get any bigger than it is right now. <laughs> All right, it's uh, top of seventh. Pioneers at 22, Chromies 17. Don't forget to please join us for the uh, award ceremony happening just after the game over at home plate. Chromies have made a substitution with uh, Barbara Killer replacing Marquetta Soljava. Barbara's at first base. And Vicky Chapman is at bat. Uh, you feel like um, Chromies really do need to hold them to minimum runs here. Another hard hit ball, and it's another base hit for Vicky between third and short. She's had a great game at bat. She's had a great game. She's had a great day. Yeah. So the Pioneers get their lead off on base. They can't. Um, here's a battle that we've seen yet. Sean Spinks down, down the pitcher's brother, younger brother. Another good hitter. Takes the strike. 
They can't really pinch run with Vicky because that would take her out of the game permanently. Sean hits a fly ball to left field. That's going to be caught for the first out. That's a big out for Premies there. They just keep coming though with Ruth, M Ruth McIntosh stepping up now. Pretty sure this is going hard down the right field line. Takes the ball deep for ball one. David Lee pitching quickly, but not successfully. Ball two inside low. And ball three. That's a strike. Three and one to Ruth McIntosh. That's a pitch. Ooh, line drive down the right field line, but foul. The count goes full, three and two. Now Ruth is gonna have to look for something more up the middle. Yeah, I don't think he'll be throwing her another outside one. The two on her, two strikes on her now. David Lee is just about ready. Full count pitch. Is, is hit over the head of the outfielders into the right center field. Vicki Chapman is tearing around the bases. Ruth right behind her. Ruth stops at third. Throw comes into home, but just too late. Vicki beats it, beats the tag. What a huge hit from Ruth McIntosh there. That was superb. Two strikes on her. Frustration, no frustration for Kat Golick that she didn't quite make the tag, but I think he was just there, just a bit too quickly for her. Okay, we have another substitution for the Pioneers here. So Robbie Robeson <laughs> batting for Pioneers. Loves a double center right. Instead, it's a little pop up, and Barbara Killer has it. Poor Robbie. <laughs> So Robbie gets one pitch and uh, lucky for him she dropped so it. Oh she dropped it. Okay. Because that yeah. We can't really see down there. It's not what you want to do when you come in as <laughs> he's a better hitter than that. Yeah, will the chromies miss grew that drop there? And they will yep. regret that because Robbie hits a line drive single to right field. And that's right the shot there. that he lives off. Ruth McIntosh scores. Another run for Pioneers. The lead is stretched now to 24-17. A runner coming in for Robbie there, someone with some, some good speed. And here we have um, Liz Buff up to you back again. Ball one. I think Chromies are beginning to feel a little bit deflated. He's got to be feeling it now. They know this is an ir irretrievable, or they will be tough. David Lee looking a little bit weary in the circle. There's a strike. Fly ball into left center field. Mo Flett is there. She's got that. Gets the ball in quickly. No advance to second base. Oh, she did well holding the runner on one there. Just what they needed. Okay, looks like we have yet another member of the Pioneer squad. Michael Lee, otherwise known as Pi, is going to get in his bat. Two down, he'll, he'll runner on right first base. This.
takes the strike. He, of course, also has power. If he gets hold of one, it could go a long way. Hits particularly well down the left field line. Open stance. Hits the ball in the left field, and that's just a little base hit. He didn't really get hold of it. So Pioneers keep going. They've got runners on first and third. And Casey Pettit Castro will be the hitter. Yeah, so far she's hit very hard. Okay, and Pi comes off. Uh, and we have a substitute runner for Pi. Challenge from the manager, keeping track of all these substitutions, pinch runners, etc., re-entries. How to keep how to keep a large squad happy is the other. Yeah. Fly ball in the left center. An amazing catch from Mike Medella. Yeah. Who came all the way over from right center to take that? So the inning is over, but uh, Pioneers score two, and Chromies come to bat in the bottom of the seventh inning with a seven run gap. Pioneers 24, Chromies 17. Considering how many good hits Pioneers had there, they did well to hold them to two runs. Absolutely. So this looks like it could be the year of Pioneers, European be. Super Cup champions, possibly national champions. Of course, by winning this tournament, if they do, they go to go back to the, uh, of course they go back anyway as defending champions in 2020. So that would open the opportunity for another team from NSL to want to go. Potentially, yeah. We have three teams this year for that reason. It could happen again. Meanwhile, we have still have half an inning to play, at least. Now, if there's any team that can do this, it's Chromies. This should be a good finale here. The pioneer has been absolutely brilliant up this point. So they'll have Paul Goff leading off. Pat Golick on deck and then back to the top of the order. Not a huge amount of light out there. Dan Spinks puts in a strike. Inside for a ball. Pitch drifts inside again, ball two. Looking calm and in control at the plate here. Rest right back to Dan Sphinx. That's a death. That hurts. And that's one out. It's so huge to get the first batter out in every inning. It Cat Gollick comes to the plate. Matt Tomlin on deck. Only two more outs left for Chromies. Cat takes a strike. Dan knows how to close out this kind of game. He does. He'll put a lot of pressure on the hitters. Okay, that's ball two, so count goes to two and one. And that's a base hit, and that's going to go all the way to the right field fence. Kat Golick around second, going for third. She will make it easily. Wow, that's a fantastic hit from Kat there, under pressure. So Chromies have a little bit of life, and they have the top of the order. Matt Tomlin needs base hit here. He popped up the left field the last time, and he can't really afford to yeah, do that again. For that, that solid um, line drive or ground ball that he likes to hit between the pitcher and second base. It's 
strike one. Chris Moon thought about it and gave it. Straight to third base. He's just too But that is so quick. He beats the throw. Cat so comes in to score. She beats the throw home. Matt's going to second base. Speed will do wonders for you. It's such a weapon on the base pass. But he hit that hard, one hop yeah. to third base and still beat the throw. It was a good throw. Yeah, he's really difficult to throw out at one if he hits it anywhere to the left side. So Chromies have to do this one, one hit at a time, one runner at a time. 24 to 18 now, Matt Tomlin on second base and Chai Louie at the plate. And that ball is gone. Wow. Huge blast over the left center field fence. Oh, wow. Oh, Chaya, what a hit. Just when they needed it. She, she loves big players come through in these situations. She loves that. She likes she nothing does. better she than that. All day long, she'll do that. Big smile. But Matt did work so well to get on for her as well. It's so important that he got on there. But still, four runs down, one out. Nobody on base. Chromies will have to start again. And they're starting with Mike McDowell. Good place to start. Seeing the way he's been hitting. And suddenly, the Chromies tails are, are up. The pitch is high, a little deep. It's going to be a conversation here between Dan Spinks and Casey Pettit Caster and Steve Hazard. Casey's probably telling him how he, how he should pitch. Given he might be contemplating a switch here. Or potential uh, or the possibility of walking him. I'm not sure that's wise with Mo up next. I mean, it doesn't make that much sense to walk and they can afford no, another run. Right. Solo home run is neither here nor there. What he's probably going to do is try and keep the ball low. And try and get, get Mike to get under the ball. Lift it to an outfielder. Count goes to one and one. And it's a chop to second base. So the first. That's two down. Wow, that's a big out for Pioneer, sir. Huge, big out. Huge out. And Chromies are down to their last out. The person of Mo Flett. There's still four runs to get to tie the game. It's looking tougher for Chromies now, but still hope. First pitch is the ball. And the second. Mo will be patient. She won't swing at anything bad. If any chance of walk here, she'll take it. Oh dear. Ground ball to Hazard. It's the shortstop over to first. And that's the ball game. And that's the national championship for 2018. Congratulations to Pioneers. Fantastic win from Pioneers. They, they, they were really great. They hit brilliantly. Uh, Chromies put a great fight up as well. It made a, a really exciting final, actually. That's two we've had today. Done well. It was an excellent final, full of good hitting, good fielding. Very well played to the The two best teams, really, in British softball have had another great game. Yeah, it's nice to see it so competitive. And uh, yeah, they, they came close there. They almost made it back. So as uh, the, the pioneers uh, deserve that, oh, they, they play brilliantly all through that game. So as the pioneers huddle before they go over to shake the Chromies' hands. Well, for once it seemed like the pioneers had a bigger bench than Chromies did, which is hard to do generally. <laughs> um, but yes. they, they made very good use of it as well. They did in the very end. Very intelligent. They, they got pretty much all of them into the game by the end. So kids are hoisted high. They're going to shake hands with the Chromies. We'd like to thank all of you for watching this game and hopefully you watched the two previous games that we web streamed this afternoon from the 
British Softball Federation National Championships. It's been a great weekend of softball. We've had two excellent finals. Thank you again for watching, and we'll uh, see you again soon. Yeah, thanks, everyone.